Good happy Monday morning, May 4th, 2020, and happy Star Wars Day as well, everyone. Today is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. You get it? May 4th? If you don't get it, and if you're not a Star Wars fan, that is okay. Welcome to this Monday morning edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. We are on a new week ahead of us, so rise and shine, everyone. Let's get this Monday off to a good start and sit back, relax, and enjoy some Good Morning New Hampshire. And grab your cup of coffee as well and enjoy this edition of Good Morning New Hampshire, where we have a little bit of everything for you in this program. But first, we're going to begin with the news. We're going to start with your local news first. First up, health officials announced two more deaths related to COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Deaths now total 86. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. At Bell Tapes, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Bell Tapes Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And right now at 10 o'clock, 90 new cases of COVID-19 confirmed today by the New Hampshire Department of Health. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Cronin. That now pushes the total number of cases since the outbreak began past 2,500. One of those new cases is a person under the age of 18. The state is also reporting two new deaths. 86 people have now died. That's 3% of the people who have caught the virus here in the Granite State. More than 1,000 people have now recovered. That number is 40% of all cases of COVID-19. This update comes just as the state is beginning the process of reopening. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Now let's take a look at your COVID-19 in New Hampshire important information. And here is a look at that information. There are 2,518 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 1,187,035 number of people in the United States who have tested positive. 86 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 282 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 68,000 559 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And here's a look at the map of New Hampshire. And this map of New Hampshire shows you where cases of COVID-19 are in towns and cities of New Hampshire. In Randolph, one to four cases of COVID-19. And this chart here, new cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, new hospitalizations, and in the red are the deaths. This chart here, current cases. In the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalizations. In this chart here, total positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, total hospitalizations. In the red, deaths, and in the blue, recovered. This chart here shows you by age group. This chart here shows you by female and male. And this chart here shows you risk information. This chart here shows you race slash ethnicity of cases. And this chart here shows you percent of New Hampshire population. And your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing. How it spreads in prevention tips. New Hampshire hospitals begin phasing in-time sensitive procedures. Procedures in place for safe 
transactions. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. When you cut lawns for a living, reliability matters. The Kubota commercial lineup with purpose-built mowers like the Z700, SZ, and W Series decrease downtime and increase productivity. And a comprehensive fleet program with special discounts and free loaners helps grow your business. One perfectly manicured lawn at a time. Now get the Z700 mower for zero down and 0% APR for 60 months or save $500. We're seconds and none. We're lucky in New Hampshire. We haven't seen the volume of COVID activity that other states are having. And that has allowed New Hampshire hospitals to bring back some patients after stopping just about everything in the middle of March because of COVID-19. Beginning Monday, hospitals can start phasing in time-sensitive procedures, such as MRIs or CT scans, knee replacements, or biopsies. We'll have an enhanced use of personal protective equipment in offices. And in our surgical areas, uh, it's very enhanced personal equipment for patients and staff. The Elliott Hospital in Manchester will also offer patients pre-procedure COVID-19 testing. And doctors will communicate with patients to see if they can continue telehealth without having to come to the hospital. We're going to watch this day by day. Similar preparations are underway at Catholic Medical Center in Manchester. Catholic Medical Center um, will be a safe place to come. CMC will have separate entrances for patients and employees. Patients who are having procedures can have one companion come with them. The companion as well will be screened as the patient will be screened coming into the front door. The hospital will also provide masks for patients and companions who do not have one. We'll have everyone there and available to meet the patients and the public needs. We're going to do everything we can to make sure it's a safe, responsible uh, emergence from this uh, lockdown of health care services. And so if we were to see an increase in COVID-19 cases in the coming weeks, both hospitals say they have plans in place to deal with that and elective procedures. However, if we were to see a significant jump in cases, they say they may have to scale back a bit. Reporting live in Manchester, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into national news. In national news, Americans across the nation struggle to pay rent. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Back now with the city exodus, American families deciding to pack up their families to move far from the crowds. Here's ABC's Deirdre Bolton. Tonight. Fears over the coronavirus pandemic, sparking an exodus from the big cities to the suburbs. One real estate industry leader telling ABC News many city dwellers don't want to share common spaces, such as lobbies and elevators right now. The pandemic hit us so hard uh, because there was really, it's very hard to completely isolate. The Ushiranko family just closed on a house in New Jersey, paying $25,000 above the asking price to escape their cramped Brooklyn apartment. When the quarantine started, I said to Julia, you know what, I bet you schools aren't even going to reopen, so we might as well move early. That really pushed up the timeline as well. They're not alone. A firm specializing in helping urbanites flee to the burbs it says its services are up 40%. Virtual 3D home tours jumped 408% in March, according to one online broker. The suburbs are going to benefit greatly from increased demand over the next uh, two to three years. I'm not certain that it's going to be uh, a long-term trend beyond that, but at this point, the suburbs have the advantage. One note for homeowners tonight, you may pay more in property taxes no matter where you live. Many public budgets are already facing a shortfall, and taxes are one place to find money. Tom? Deirdre Bolton for us tonight. Deirdre, welcome to World News, our first report tonight for us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at the coronavirus updates for the rest of the world. Italy cautiously emerges from the world's largest lockdown. 
Italy was the first country to impose a nationwide lockdown due to the pandemic. Today's biggest developments, global death toll nears a quarter of a million. Italy cautiously emerges from the world's largest lockdown. U.S. report 25,000 new cases on Sunday. Virus was present in Europe in late December, doctors claim. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into business news. In your business news, Dow features drop 300 points to start the week. Airline stocks fall on Buffett sale. Stocks fell early Monday morning as traders weighed the reopening of the economy along with brewing tension between China and the U.S. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into weather. Your weather right now is sunny, 57 degrees. Weather for today, partly cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower, high 62 degrees. Winds northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into New Hampshire Life. In New Hampshire Life segment, St. Anselm College to honor graduates with virtual ceremony. A later in-person celebration is being planned. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. At Bell Tate's, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Bell Tate's Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. St. Anselm College will honor its graduating seniors with a virtual certification ceremony until later plans can be made. The live stream will be broadcast from the Abbey Church on May 16th. That's the day that would have been graduation. The name of every senior who has completed their graduation requirements will be read by Dean Mark Cronin after the college president officially certifies they have done so. It's been a bit heartbreaking for them because they've missed out the last couple of months of their senior year when so many rituals and, and, and celebrations happen. But uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, we, we, want, we want to make sure that we mark their accomplishments. The school's president says a committee of students and faculty has been formed to work on planning an in-person celebration in the future. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And switching gears now, as you know, at the top of our broadcast, we mentioned today is Star Wars Day. More about National Star Wars Day, May 4th. Today is National Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you each year on National Star Wars Day. Or is it May the 4th be with you? It all depends on whether you like using puns or not. Thousands of Star Wars enthusiasts celebrate this day each year with parties and celebrations around the nation. Star Wars fans didn't first introduce the often quoted phrase on May 4th. It was 1979 and Britain elected the first female Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. On May 4th, the day she took office, the Conversation Party placed an advertisement in London Evening News, which read, May the 4th be with you, Maggie. Congratulations. Star Wars creator George Lucas was asked during a 2005 interview on a German news TV channel to say the famous sentence, May the 4th be with you. Upon doing so, the interpreter 
interrupted the sentence into German as M for Ma Sunbia on May 4th. We are with you. TV Total captured this and aired it on May 18th, 2005. How to celebrate and observe National Star Wars Day. Wear your Wookiee costume or bring your lightsaber. The prepare for rap speed. Whatever you go, may the 4th be with you. Oh, and be sure to watch some Star Wars films or play some trivia. Make some outer space snacks to enjoy. Use hashtag National Star Wars Day to post on social media. National Star Wars Day History National Star Wars Day was first or organized in Toronto, Canada at the Toronto Underground Cinema in 2011. Produced by Sean Ward and Alison Quinn, festivals included an original trilogy trivia game show, a costume contest, and Webb's Best Tribute Films mashup, pardons, and remix on the big screen. May 4th was chosen because of the play on words. Very cool indeed. Happy National Star Wars Day everyone. And comment below and let us know how you will be celebrating National Star Wars Day today. We want to hear from you. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into entertainment news. In entertainment news, Kendall Jenner epic reaction Two dating rumors makes sister Kylie proud. Let's take a listen to that video from Entertainment Tonight. I think sometimes there's a lot of like judgment. Kendall Jenner took full control of the narrative around her dating rumors, specifically a tweet and TikTok video commenting on her alleged relationships with NBA stars. Wow. It was also seemingly in response to Kendall being spotted in Arizona on Wednesday with Devin Booker, a player for the Phoenix Suns. In 2018, he also happened to be romantically linked to Kylie Jenner's former best friend, Jordan Woods. One user captioned this video, NBA players passing around Kendall Jenner. Another replied, maybe she's passing them around, which prompted Kendall herself to enter the conversation, writing, they act like I'm not in full control of where I throw this cooch. <laughs> I promise I'll try my best. <laughs> the colorful clapback was followed by sister Kylie Jenner joining the fun, tweeting LMFAO tweet of the year. Kendall explained to ET in 2015 why she likes to keep her dating life private. It's not always easy. But I don't know, I just kind of, I like to keep my private life pretty private, so um, I try my best, but at the same time I don't, I don't like to let being seen out in public with someone like affect my everyday life. Like if I want to go grab a smoothie with a friend who's a male, I'm not going to like let the paparazzi like stop me from doing that and living my life and just being a normal person. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your famous birthdays for today. Let's see which celebrities are celebrating a birthday today. And happy birthday to all of these celebrities. We hope they have a wonderful birthday and a wonderful day. And that does it for this Monday morning edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Monday, everyone, and I'll see you back here next time for another edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. Goodbye, everyone.